Branded e-commerce is better than dropshipping. Now, before I get into that, first of all, good morning, guys. It's two in the morning right now. Now, in this video, I, I wanna go over why I personally think branded e-commerce, branding, privately white low, whatever you wanna call it, is a lot better and what you should be doing, or at least have your end goal be, uh, moving you know into 2019. Um, I mean, we're already a third of the way into 2019, but you know, moving forward in terms of like where the industry is in the e-commerce segment and in the sort of like entrepreneur e-commerce space, right? So before we go into that, obviously, um, I started drop shipping, right? That's, that's where I found my first success in business. Obviously, guys, branded e-commerce isn't always going to be you know the go-to I'm not saying you know every single situation you need to be doing brand e-commerce e-commerce is the way to go like what private label white label all that stuff like you have to do that that's not what I'm saying you know there are certain situations where you want to drop ship first where you want to start drop shipping and move into private label and branded e-commerce and stuff like that um, and I'll, I'll kind of explain those sort of situations guys and sort of what you should be looking out for if you're going to do that um, but first of all I want to get to drop shipping and sort of like first of all the pros of drop shipping and then sort of break down everything else right so let's get started. first of all low risk right so drop shipping again very 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 little capital up front. Um, it's, it's what, 30 bucks for a Shopify trial, maybe a few dollars more just for a few certain apps and stuff. If you're bootstrapping, you really don't need those apps. Um, so like, again, compared to like the 1900s guys, where you could literally had to go open a brick and mortar store, get a loan from a bank, or be really, really wealthy, um, there's a much lower barrier of entry into this space, okay? So again, very, very little capital to get started. You don't need a lot of money. That's why it's so popular, okay? Now, I was, I was pretty stupid though. I dropped out before I had like, a super solid revenue stream. But that's okay, that's okay. It's, it worked out. The next pro of dropshipping, a streamlined process, right? So most of you guys, especially if you're just like new to the space or not experienced in the e-commerce space, you don't really have to deal with the backend logistics of e-commerce, right? So most of the time, right, as a dropshipper, you're the middleman, okay? You don't hold inventory, right? You're working with a supplier, you're ordering from a supplier, the supplier ships it to the buyer. Now, the buyer, or the supplier, sorry, excuse me, um, you usually don't have to deal with like logistics or inventory management or like working with lead times, like a net 30, a net 60 lead delay, for your inventory, for your products like coming in bulk and stuff like that, you don't you don't have to worry about that stuff because the supplier is managing it and they're managing the picking and the packing and the shipping of your product. So that allows you to just focus on getting that product in front of people in the market, which is nice. You know, you don't have to worry about all of that stuff. Okay, but then that leads into the pros and cons later of, of why I think branding is is very powerful um, in this sort of setting. Now, the cons of dropshipping, right? This is where it gets this is where it gets trickier, especially moving into 2019. Um, first of all, there's huge competition, right? I just said like there's a low startup cost, very little capital involved to get started. Okay, what does that mean? It means a lot more people are seeing this as a viable way to get started, which it is, but it also means there's a lot more people doing this, right? Think about it. Every single view you see on this YouTube video, on other YouTube videos in this space, is another person that's interested in doing this or is doing this, which is not directly your competition, but again, just to sh it just shows you like there's a lot of people that are getting into this space and figuring it out, right? Because again, it's a very, very low barrier of entry, which means you have huge competition across the board. Next one, low margins, right? Now there's a ways to combat this. I've made videos about this in the past, right? You can either, you know, you can either sort of get out of that low margin loophole by again winning in volume. So you just have so much volume where the margins don't necessarily matter, and you just you just have so much volume where that, that that's where you make a lot of money, right? That's like what Amazon does. That's how they can price so competitively, make a lot of money, is because they win in volume. Now. Um, the next thing you can do, right, is by just being able to justify a higher price point. What do I mean by that? So you could still have a product that costs really cheap, but instead of trying to compete with Amazon or compete with competitors at a price point, right, your entire brand, your content, content, right, I always preach content, and your, your angle, all of that, justifies a higher price point, right? Your content's good. You make people feel a certain way where they want to buy your product. Because again, people buy off of emotions, guys, okay? And then they justify it with logic. So if you can get someone to feel a certain way about your brand, about your brand's story, about your website, the content you're displaying on your website, anything like that, if you can make them feel a certain way or urge them to purchase, right? Then that's how you can justify a higher price point. And again, people buying things online, guys, it's just an exchange of value. All you're doing is convincing someone that what they see on this computer screen is more valuable than the money in their bank account. That's all it is, down to its core, really, okay? Now, the, the next con I wanna talk about for adoption, right, is inventory flow. Like, you don't, you don't know what's going on with your inventory, right? Some apps, you know, if you're using Oberlo, if you're using Dropify, stuff like that, they, they try and like tell you the amount of inventory that a certain supplier has, but it isn't always correct. And inventory can disappear like that in a day, especially because you're drop shipping from suppliers who are also supplying other drop shippers. So if, if one of your competitors who's selling the same product is using your supplier, they have a really big day and they, you know, like they, they sell out 
all the products, right? And you're still trying to do that. Now you're back ordered, okay? Or you're both back ordered. It's not a good situation to be in because there's no products and people are giving you money for that product that you don't have or that your supplier doesn't have. After those, right, obviously, those are the pros and cons. There's, there's, there's more to both. Okay, those are the big ones that I want to touch on. Now, moving into branded e-commerce, and why I think this is better, and honestly, the move and why most of you guys should be moving into this. All right, so first of all, you have complete brand control, okay? So what do I mean that? Every single touch point between you and a potential customer or a potential client, you have complete control over, okay? All the content, like, like you literally have control of their eyeballs when they're cruising through your brand or when they're looking through your ad or whatever it is, you have complete control over that. Now, with dropshipping, don't get me wrong, because again, I started dropshipping, so it's, I'm not like bashing on dropshipping by any means. Like you have, you can get a, a lot of control in those touch points, right? By, by having good content and doing that sort of thing. But what you're also missing is the actual unboxing experience, the customer purchase experience after they receive your product, which is equally as important. That's just no one, no one on YouTube is, talks about this, right? It's just as important, the unboxing experience, how a customer feels afterwards. Like literally using sensory marketing, there's, there's, there's a reason why certain companies, when you unbox their stuff, it smells a certain way. They literally spray it with a certain smell to make you feel a certain way, okay? Emotions, every, everything's emotional, okay? So like there's so many things that you can control post-purchase customer experience to make that person, again, like your brand, be more likely to buy something from your brand down the road and tell their friends about it, okay? And again, just increases your brand's reputation. So complete control is super, super, super important in this space. Now, the next one is price control, okay? So you don't have to deal with MSRPs or MAPs um, like you would with dropshipping, right? You have complete control of your price, right? You can, again, if you're, if you're branded yourself, you are choosing who's making your product. You're choosing if you're making your product, right? So you can control material costs and all these sort of different aspects that go along with that. In dropshipping, you have very, very little control over the actual cost of good. You just, you can only just, you know, mark it up. You can't actually decrease that cost of good unless you develop relationships with your suppliers, which again, you can do with dropshipping, but it's just harder. And again, you don't have a, you don't, you don't have control. You know, your brand, like brand identity with you, okay? Next one is bigger margins. Now, Again, this kind of touches on that pri on that last one where like you have more price control. But again, with bigger margins, guys, you can choose your suppliers. You can choose the material, the products you're making, all this kind of stuff. If you have a really good brand, and you know, if, if you can just swap suppliers or swap materials that a certain that your supplier is using to lower your cost of goods by ten percent, that's that's a lot more revenue. Okay, especially if you're doing high volume stuff. Even if you are dropshipping, I feel like you should be moving to brand e-commerce, okay? By optimizing your back end, you can make a lot more money too. So it's not always just like, oh man, I gotta get my CPMs lower on Facebook. I gotta just, you know, like optimize these Facebook ads or these paid ads. You can also optimize your back end, which you can't do with dropshipping, but you can do with branded e-commerce, okay? Now, the next one too, uh, the next pro is, right, is quality control. So a lot of people dropshipping, some of the biggest problems is one, shipping times, which again, you don't have to deal with with branded e-commerce because you can use a fulfillment center or you can ship it out of your own house um, like I did when I started. Um, either way, you have control over shipping and it's much quicker than most dropshipping product ship times, okay? Um, but the next one is quality control, guys. So again, you, you're testing with your supplier. You're getting samples. You're testing the quality of your product, the packaging, the inserts, everything like that. You're dictating you know, what actually gets to the customer. With dropshipping, you don't. The product's already made. It's in a little plastic wrap and it's shipped to the customer. So that's a huge, huge, huge control. Because again, when you want complete brand control, you need to have that control over your quality, right? With dropshipping, you can get you can get super close to like 100% control, but it's never going to be 100%, which is what hurts you in the end. The cons of brand e-commerce, right? So obviously, just to play devil's advocate, I have to tell you reasons why you shouldn't always go into brand e-commerce. Higher startup costs is probably the first one. Um, just because you're dealing with, you know, like MOQs, minimum order quantities, stuff like that, which literally just means, hey, you have, you know, you're making a custom product with your logo name on it. They require you to purchase a certain amount up front for your first batch. Like you can't just purchase five, okay? Sometimes they're 50, sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 300 in terms of like how many units you need to purchase of your product, okay? And also keep in mind that different variants Right, we'll sometimes have different MOQs, okay? If, like if one variant, for example, if I was selling jewelry and one was like a real rose gold while one was just stainless steel, they might have a higher MOQ for the stainless steel one or for the rose gold one, okay? Depending on their own costs and stuff that they're dealing with on their end of things, all right? Now, if you're working with my brand building agency team, ah, I've choked on saliva, dude. Fucking saliva, man. If you're working with our branding agency, Atlas Brand Building, we handle all that for you, link in description, always plug, yeah, we just brought that back. 
If you're OG, you know what I'm talking about. Now, uh, the next con, guys, is you have less agility, okay, with the business. Now, what I actually mean by that is by having inventory, right, you can't pivot your business as quickly as you could with dropshipping, right? With dropshipping, it's literally just logging into Shopify, deleting a product, adding a new product, getting custom products, uh, product images, and then doing content for it, writing the description, and it's like, boom, you just did a product launch, okay? In theory, there's a lot more goes into it, but, you know, that's, that's the sense of it. Uh, now, with branded, you know, you have to actually get a whole new custom product. Like, there's work that's involved with it, but usually the payoff is a lot higher than dropshipping, okay? Now, the next con that I wanna get into is, or this last one is, it's a longer time to get into the market, okay? So, again, if, if you're really just focusing on trends and you're just in it for a quick buck, which I hope you aren't because you can make a lot more money in the long term. I just burped again, damn. Um, but if you are, you know, in it just to, like, to hop on trends and trend hop, Branding isn't usually what you're gonna wanna do unless you know what you're doing, okay? If you know what you're doing, then you can kill trends, okay? But you have to be able to execute and get quick to market. Most people can't even get to the market within, you know, two months, three months. Most people take like six months to get to market, okay? Which isn't like necessarily bad. You know, most people expect to do that. But again, like for me, for my agency, for the friends that I know that do brand e-commerce, we can get to market within two months. It takes longer to get to the market usually than with dropshipping, right? Dropshipping, the product's already there. You're literally just a click of a button away from being live and selling to people, okay? So again, yeah, that's sort of like the, the, the pros and the cons of both dropshipping and branded e-commerce and sort of the difference and just the reason why I think, you know, branding is the future and what you should, like, that's what you should be moving into, guys, is like, if you think about it, like, dropshipping is just like, just like, if you were to level up dropshipping, that's what branding would be. So there's no reason to hold yourself back and stay dropshipping, okay? Like, you, you'd literally be losing money. It's not a smart, business decision, right? Like you as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, businesswoman. So it's literally not a smart business decision to stay dropshipping. You literally make less money. So I'd assume you're trying to be the best businessman that you can be. So by doing so, you want to transition into brand e-commerce. Cause again, your margins are usually better. You have more control over the entire experience. Like there's, there's in my opinion, so many pros that outweigh the cons into why you should. And most of the cons can be, uh, what do you call it? Like a eliminated by actually just, you know, having a successful dropshipping store or having saved up a little bit of cash. Okay. That's really the biggest con. So that's really it guys. And so there's really no reason or nothing like there's not a huge hurdle that's stopping you from getting into this space and trying, you know, to market and bring a product to market successfully. All right. So that is the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was a little long, but again, I wanted to kind of go over dropshipping and branded e-commerce. I was getting a bunch of DMs about it and people were just like, you know, I have a dropshipping store. I want to go into the branded e-commerce. Like, what do I do? How do I do it? Um, so I hope this kind of gives some clarity in terms of just like the differences and why I would do either. Now, if you do have a dropship store, if you wanna get into a brand, you want us to build you a brand, link is in the description, guys. That's literally just the main service that we're doing here. Um, it's it's not cheap, but we do everything for you. Literally, literally everything, okay? But yeah, that's literally why we're up so late, guys. Um, and just cause I suck at planning out YouTube videos, so yeah, doing that one for you. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to comment. I'll respond to everybody's comments as long as they're not like a year later. And make sure to subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. I really hope this video records the audio and everything well, because this is round two. So yeah, peace out. I love you all. I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah, this is a really awkward outro. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> oh God. Um, oh God, I said I'm a lot. Yeah, this, <laughs> focus, focus. Okay. Mm. Um. <clears throat> By, I said again, I said again like five times in a row. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, uh, oh man, where was I? Fuck. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat>